Good morning. We welcome you to worship this morning here at St. John's. We especially want to welcome our visitors and ask that they take time to sign the guest register, which is in the lobby, that everyone take time to sign the welcome pad and to, uh, that, that everyone will sign that. Um, just a couple of announcements on this rather cold morning. You know, I came to church yesterday. In the afternoon, it was 52 degrees. And when I left church last night, it was 32 degrees. I'm not saying anything because I'm not going to get the boss angry, but somebody's screwing up around here. Now we are suddenly back into winter. But it is good to have you here on this first Sunday in the uh, season of Christmas. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, I was given an announcement that due day for January of 2014 is uh, on January 14th and not January 7th as listed in the newsletter and the program book. Again, it is January 14th of 2014. 2014. I'm not used to that. I'm not used to, I'm not ready. You know, they say time flies the older you get. Well, it's zipping by here pretty quick because now we are already, next, next time we meet, gather, it will be the year 2014. So, I don't know, have you made your New Year's resolution? I made mine to never make a New Year's resolution. Um, also today, uh, the uh, altar uh, flowers are with us in honor of Cliff and Arlene Peters' 65th wedding anniversary. And we want to thank them for these, uh, for these flowers and congratulate you on 65 years of marriage. Let us do so, my brothers and sisters. Sixty-five. Congratulations. That is special. That is very special. Also today, uh, you will note that we have a, a different sort of a service. The service is a service of lessons and carols. Uh, we will be singing. Uh, there are a uh, number of those, a uh, number of different lessons from the Nativity narratives. There is no sermon this morning. I thought we'd get a standing ovation for that. But no, the sermon itself comes to us from the lessons. So pay close attention as we read through the infancy narratives. And we will follow the bulletin as it is printed. Also today, uh, this morning's service is a very special service as well. Our sister in Christ, uh, um, Kay, uh, has been with us for a number of years. You know, our Lord God grants us a number of gifts and talents. And the talent that uh, he has gifted... uh, Our sister in Christ, Kay Koch, is the talent of producing music. Martin Luther once said many years ago, he said, theology is the groom, but the bride, the bride is the arts. That's how we come to gain the message that Jesus Christ is our Savior. And Kay has been with us. This is her last service as head organist up there in the loft. We want to thank you so much, Kay, for all that you have done, bringing the music to this sanctuary and leading our people in the, uh, in the singing of the hymns. Let us show our joy for Kay being with us for so many years. <laughs> yes, number of services. Have you, do you know how many services you've done here? <laughs> well, I think just the term, oh boy, is enough, <laughs> yeah, yes, between service, worship services on Sunday mornings and funerals and weddings, you've been here for us for so many years, and again, we thank you. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Hearing none, our service begins with the singing of hymn number 283, O Come All Ye Faithful, with the congregation please rise.
We begin our reading of the infancy narratives from Luke. This is the season of Christmas. Christmas lasts 12 days, hence the 12 days of Christmas, beginning with Christmas Day and going through Epiphany Day, which is January 6th. Unlike some who are watching TV, I suddenly discovered there are 25 days of Christmas, according to the A&E Network. And according to another one, the 12 days of Christmas begins on the 13th of December and culminates on the 25th. Wrong. Christmas starts on Christmas Day, and it goes for 12 days. Throughout that season, we are to spend the time reading the infancy narratives. Now, strange as it may seem, only two of our gospel writers include infancy stories or nativity stories. The one most commonly read is Luke. Luke comes to this uh, story by looking mainly at the character of Mary. Throughout the season of Advent, we should have been reading from Luke 1. The Luke 1 account tells us of the story of the coming of, of John the Baptist to, to uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, and later Angel Gabriel visiting Mary, and then we get the great words of the Magnificat and the Ave is said. But now we're past Luke 1, and so we move to Luke 2, and it goes something like this. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. And he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Now while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends our first reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 279, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
continues his story with the announcement of the birth of Jesus. Luke makes it quite clear that Jesus' birth was first announced not to the political authorities, the king or the the emperor, nor was he uh, announced to the religious leadership, the chief priests and the scribes, or the political leadership of Pharisee and Sadducee. Instead, Luke points out that Jesus' birth announcement was given to one of the lowliest of the people and sometimes even considered the outcasts. For the first to hear the good news, we're a group of shepherds. And he tells the story in this way. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night. When an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior was Christ the Lord. Now this will be a sign for you. You'll find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angel had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with great haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Now, when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Ah, but Mary, Mary pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Here ends our second reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 300, the first Noel.
During the Christmas season, there are a number of festivals that we can celebrate. They range from the Feast of St. Stephen, uh, the day after Christmas, all the way to the Feast of John the Baptist, and another story that we'll get to in a little bit called the Holy Innocents. But there's another festival that we celebrate, and we celebrate it on the 1st of January. No, that's not a badger victory. And what we celebrate that day is called the naming of our Lord. Being the good Jews that Joseph and Mary were, they knew that within eight days they had to take Jesus to be circumcised and to be given a name. Luke is the only author that includes this story, and then he adds an addendum to it, the story of a great prophet by the name of Simeon. The story goes like this. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. Now it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would, be, he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to him, to, to do for him as was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms. And then he praised God by saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. Now the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. So then Simeon blessed them, and he said to his mother Mary, This child... This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. Ah, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Here ends this reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 277, Away in the Manger.
Luke continues his story from the temple, not only with the prophecy of Simeon, but he adds the prophecy of a woman. Her name was Anna. <clears throat> now, there was also a prophet, Anna. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Now the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here ends this reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 270, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. we take a slight turn. We go and look at Matthew's infancy narrative. Luke started off his with an entire chapter preceding the actual birth, speaking about people like Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John the Baptist, the Annunciation by Gabriel. Matthew doesn't include any of that. To Matthew, it begins with the simple genealogy, from Abraham all the way to Jesus. And for Matthew, it would seem, the most important aspect of Christ's coming is in fulfillment of the promise of God. Throughout these few readings from Matthew, 
Notice the number of times that we hear Matthew say, as was to fulfill what was said by the prophet. Matthew wants to make sure that we are certain that this is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Also, as we saw in the first count of Luke, Luke spends a great deal of time dealing with Mary. Joseph, on the other hand, spends time with Joseph. And his account begins in this way. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. <clears throat> when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, that before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Here ends this reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 288, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Did you notice the difference between Luke and, and Matthew? Matthew doesn't have a manger, a stable. He doesn't even tell us why they were in Bethlehem. He just simply says that Jesus was born there in fulfillment of the prophecy. And he also doesn't include shepherds. Whereas Luke tells us that the announcement first came to the shepherds, the lowly shepherds, Matthew adds a completely different angle to it. For he involves Gentiles. It is where we get the story that we celebrate on the 6th of January, the Epiphany of our Lord. It is the story of the Magi. And it begins like this. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising. We've come to pay him homage. 
When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. Calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this Messiah was to be born. Well, they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd, who is, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Well, then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They knelt down and they paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends this reading. We continue with the singing of hymn number 289, Angels We Have Heard on High. As I said, there are a number of festivals and feast days and occasions that occur following the 25th of December. As I've said, the 26th is the Feast of Stephen, the 27th, the Festival of St. John, and then there comes the feast day that would have been celebrated yesterday, the 28th. It is called the Feast to the Holy Innocents, sometimes called the Proto-Martyrs, the first who died for the cause of Christ. It's not a very good story, not massively uplifting. 
It is the story of the death of innocents, the children of Bethlehem. Again, listen to this story that Matthew tells us from the understanding or from the, the, the way that he presents fulfillment of the scriptures. It goes like this. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Go up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and he went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been, been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. Now when Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in the town called Nazareth so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Here ends this, our reading. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 275, Angels from the Realm of Glory. We now bring our readings to a close. We close with one final story as included in Luke's account. Luke tells us the story of Jesus at 12 years of age. He is the only author in all of scripture that records a story concerning Jesus from the time between infancy 
and the baptism by, Saint, by John the Baptist. Now, one thing that's interesting is this is traditionally a text that is read on the second Sunday of Christmas, a time when we are making preparation for the baptism of our Lord. The story includes a number of interesting angles. For one thing, it, is a, it talks about Jesus and his understanding of who he is, Jesus and the understanding on the part of his parents as to who he is, as well as Jerusalem suddenly discovering who Jesus is. It goes like this. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind into Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. When they started to look for him among their friends and relatives, and they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. But when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Behold, your, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Well, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. Here ends our readings. The service continues with the singing of hymn number 296, What Child Is This?
have heard the story. We know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, come to fulfill not only the prophecy, but to fulfill the promise of God. And now I ask you in response to this glorious story of what God has done for us, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as found on the inside back cover of the ELW. Would the congregation please rise? <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came from heaven. Most incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord God, it is a glorious story, an awesome story. The Word made flesh and dwells among us, born the babe in Bethlehem, given as a gift to us in his life, death, and resurrection. He grants to us the gift of forgiveness and a place in heaven. It's a fabulous story, Lord. Open our hearts to hear it every day, to make it a part of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. It is such a fabulous story, Lord. We cannot keep it to ourselves, but we need to spread this word from one end of the earth to the other. Use us as your missionaries, as your prophets, to speak forth the great story of the birth of the very Savior of the world. Bless every missionary from one end of the earth to the other. Protect, guard, and keep them that the message go out to all the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord God, we come this day offering our words of thanks and glory. For you will bestow upon us so many gifts and talents. We want to thank you for the gift of our sister in Christ for Kay Koch and how much she has given not only to this congregation, but to your church. Using the talent of music, she has presented the gospel in such a beautiful fashion. Well, Lord God, we thank you for all that she has done through, the, all you have done through her. We ask you now as she moves on in her life to continue to bless her always that she may be a blessing to all she touches. Lord, in your mercy. And it is another glorious day, O oh Lord God, for we remember the anniversary of our brother and sister in Christ, Cliff and Arlene Peters. O oh Lord God, you have walked the walk of life with them for 65 years, blessing each one of them that they may be a blessing for each other. Use them now, Lord God, in the days ahead to continue to bless their family and to be a blessing to this world. Protect, guard, and keep them always. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all those who are, have concerns today. We pray for the sick, the hospitalized, those who are recovering. We pray for those who are lonely, those in need. We pray for those who are worried or anxious. We pray for those who are mourning and grieving the death of a loved one. Touch each with your loving presence. We especially bring before you today our brothers and sisters in Christ, Don and Joanne and Charlotte and Larry, touch them always, Lord God. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, as this holiday season comes to an end, again there will be people moving from place to place. They will be on the roads and planes and trains and buses going home. Now as we read in the story this morning, you protected your son as he made his way from Bethlehem to Egypt to Nazareth. 
Continue to bless, protect, and guard our travelers always. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to share the peace with one another. Good and loving God, we rejoice at the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Be seated, and all are welcome at the Lord's table. Come now, for the feast is ready.
please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.